You may be wondering, what am I doing with this antique? This is the HPC 440 and it's 10 years old, more close to 11. It was released in 2014. But as you can see inside here, this is a bulky machine. It has a ton of expandability options in the PCI side, uh, a lot of RAM uh, that you can add into here. And this is a great system for making it a home server. But wait a second. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it into a gaming machine. It might not be the greatest and baddest out there, but for a 10 year old system, you're going to see what we can achieve with something like this. And let me tell you something. This system cost me $115. Now it cost me a little bit more because I'm upgrading it today, but for $115, it already has a CPU and that's it. I, I think it's a pretty good deal for a system like this. And you can probably get them cheaper out there. So let's see some of the features that this computer has. As you can see here, this Blu-ray didn't come with it, but it has two expandable slots, 5.25 inch, I think. It has USBs, your power button, and audio jacks. Not much to see in front, right? But let's see the inside now. Now looking at the internals, this system has a 700 watt power supply, which is a pretty good thing because it's going to support a lot of devices. And now let's look at the internals. You see eight slots for RAM. It supports quad channel RAM. And you can see the multitude of connections. You hear it, it does not support M.2 NVMe, but it supports HDD and SSD via SATA. And when you can see down here, the PCIe slots, it has plenty of options for expandability. You got X1, X16, X4, X8. X16 and PCI slots, and I'll go, I'm going to close it up. This is a heavy system. You can see there a lot of expandability for your graphics cards, video cards, Ethernet cards, and whatnot. And for the CPU, it has an E5 1650B4 CPU. The only sad thing is that it is only six cores the CPU. Uh, but we're going to upgrade that so we can get a uh, more usage of the system instead of just having the six core one. And I'll tell you in a second what I'm going to be upgrading it. And basically, the green stickers is stuff that you can remove without hardware. You don't need any hardware. You can see here as well. If you just move this, it, you'll be able to release your graphics card. And back here, you're going to be able to just open the slots, pull them out like this, insert a card, and you close it up, and it holds the card in place. So a lot of this stuff is... You can, you can attach it without any hardware. And that makes it really easy to be able to do certain things without having to undo and redo the screws. So let's talk about upgrades. Okay, for upgrades, we have a Intel Xeon E5 2697V4 CPU. Now, if you want to know how it compares to a regular CPU, I'll show you. This is a regular size CPU compared next to the Xeon CPU. And remember this one is older, but it has 18 cores, 4.0 gigahertz max frequency. It's a decent CPU. It's better than the one that's currently in the system. And a lot newer, more modern uh, CPUs are going to be more efficient, but I wanted more cores, so I got this one. The one on the system currently has six cores. Now for the next one, I wanted to do M.2 NVMe, but I don't have the adapter card for the PCIe slot. So I'm going to use a one terabyte crucial SSD. We're going to have the RX 5500 XT. Now you'll see that it doesn't have two fans and it does vibrate because of that. But on another video, I'm going to show you guys how to repair, how to replace the fans on a GPU. You can see here the type of connections and we're going to be using HDMI and it has a, a gigabytes VRAM and this computer only has a six pin uh, connector. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, convert the six pin from six pin to an eight pin. And apparently this uh, connection can support up to 215 watts. So it, it, it'd be more than enough for our graphics card purposes, but I guess we'll find out if it works. If we see a problem, we'll know it's uh, the power. But this is what we're going to do today. And these things, you uh, Wi-Fi dongles for the computers always come in handy. 
I'm going to be installing Windows 10. We'll uh, game a little bit and we'll see the benchmarks and see how we stack up against other computers. So let's get started with the upgrade process. Okay, our first upgrade is going to be attaching our CPU. And this is a pretty simple process. It has four screws that you remove and then it's out. And to remove the screws on the heat sink for the CPU, you'll need this pattern screws. It's kind of like star or something. It almost resembles uh, the security bit, but without the hole. Make sure you remove the uh, fan cable and make sure you clean it up well because you never know if you might need it again for testing or something. They make, make sure you install your CPU correctly and you'll see an arrow on your motherboard, which I believe is this one. Make sure it's falls in place. And there you go. Now your CPU is secured. Now you can apply your thermal paste. I'm going to add more, uh, more than five dots. That's going to be the pattern I choose. Now you can attach your CPU cooler. Do a visual inspection, make sure everything looks decent. And then uh, attach your CPU fan. It's going to be this guy right here. And there you go. It's inserted. And that's basically how you install your CPU into your HPC 440. We're going to attach RAM. Each slot is going to be around 16 gigabytes. And I'm going to have every detail of the components in the description. For installing your SSD is pretty easy. This is for 3.5 power. Data side, just make sure you're putting it in the right way so you can see. And I'll just leave it in here. Now for our graphics card, 16, X16, slot two. This is the one I'm gonna be putting it on. Okay. You move this slot in. I'm gonna grab the cable, six pin, six pin. And now, we're going to attach it here. And we have our power for our GPU. So now let's start getting uh, ready to test the system, see if it works. Because until now, I have not tested this system. You're going to need a USB keyboard and mouse. Okay, connect to your graphics card. Okay, so we have something. Now let's start the installation of Windows 10 into the system. Okay, so we want to do Windows 10. Put in normal mode. Okay, so we don't have uh, our SSD showing. Basically, if you don't see your uh, SSD, because I had to go into my BIOS and change it from RAID to AHCI, we can begin the installation. Ethernet not connected. We should see if this one works. Okay, and ha we have uh, Windows 10 installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, setting it up so that it works better. In this case, I'm doing all the updates for Windows and I'm going to do all the other updates. And then I'm going to show you Task Manager at the end to show you that it does uh, recognize the GPU and the other components. Because right now it's not even showing the U GPU. But that's a, a basic thing that all of us know how to do. Check for updates on Windows. Drivers, you go to the manufacturer website. In this case, I'm going to go to HP and I'm going to download all the HP uh, drivers for the HPC 440 on their website for Windows 10. Then at the end, I'm gonna get uh, the drivers for the GPU from the manufacturer. So just letting you know about that, most of you already know this. And this is a Cinebench R23, a really popular uh, CPU uh, benchmark to see how well your CPU is performing. I did a multi-core test and it did okay for how old the CPU is. I also did a four mark, uh, kind of like a stress test. I didn't benchmark it, but you can see there the uh, FPS that is getting the VRAM usage, the temperature, and it, it's doing okay for um, the broken fans and other stuff. I still need to fix that, but this is a good, really good stress test for your GPU. Now onto Cyberpunk. I the only thing I did on Cyberpunk is I did the. Uh, in-game benchmark and you can see there i did two benchmarks one time and then the second time i decreased the quality of the image and you're going to see that we're going to see a little bit more fps on the second test
and now uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This is an older game, but I had it in there and I wanted to test it out and you know it did pretty well with the game. I even uh, decreased the uh, quality of the image to get better FPS. And then uh, the most popular Fortnite. And I did notice some stutter, but uh, the, the, C, uh, the GPU definitely doesn't help because it's a 5500 XT and you, I could get a, a better one and you can see better FPS. But it did pretty well, I, it, it can run Fortnite really well. And this is uh, Heaven from Unigine. Basically, it's gonna benchmark your uh, GPU, and it's a it's a really good test. You can see there the FPS 115, and uh, really popular uh, 3D Mark. I did uh, the Time Spy, and the funny thing is, uh, it. Uh, compared to other systems, it didn't do so great, but I think this computer for, for gaming, I mean, like I said, get a better GPU for today's standards is not the best gaming computer, but it is an, it is an amazing server computer, I, if I can say that, but I think it does really well in the gaming sphere. Okay, and I did say I was going to do a review of the parts that I bought, just so you can see how much I spent. In this case, uh, $115 plus taxes, probably $120, $125. So uh, this C440 comes with a CPU, 1656 core, something like that. Um, it is really cheap. So you could potentially build a gaming computer, computer for $200. For me, it was more than two hundred dollars, but I'll, 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 we'll see it in a second. Now let's go on to the next component, and this is the RAM that I use for the computer. Now I did buy two, so that pushes the price a little bit more. And you see ECC. This is a different type of RAM than your regular computer. This is ECC, error correcting code, something like that. So it basically corrects uh, codes that it finds in memory. That way it can perform better. And you can see 16 gigabytes, I have 32, but if you buy one for 22, you can save money. Or if you wanna buy eight gigabytes, you just need like 12 bucks or 10, $8. So it can be really cheap as much as you want. Now let's go to the other component. Now, this is the CPU I chose because it has 18 cores and it's a pretty decent CPU. It has uh, a max frequency of 4.0 and 34, something threads so for productivity i think it's more than enough you're going to be able to have a home server and do plenty of things so this is the one i chose it was like 50 dollars. you can keep the one on the system but no i wanted something better and this is what i chose 50 dollars uh 16 core 30 something threads it i wanted i want to be able to experiment and do more things with my computer in the future now, if you want to find it, I have you have all the details here on the screen. Pause it and write them down or see this video later again as many times as you want. Now, this is the GPU I chose is the RX 5500 XT with eight gigabytes. Now, it doesn't have two fans and that limits. Uh, I, I'm thinking it may limit the card at, like there's a, uh, a strong vibration on the card and I don't want to damage the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace those fans, the two of them, and I'm going to add some new ones and see if the vibration uh, is gone. But I guess I should have spent a little bit more money. But now if you really account for everything that I spent, you'd see that I spent around $400. Yes, it's a little bit more than I wanted to uh, spend, but I think that I'm gonna be able to use that uh, server machine for many different purposes. If I wanna rebuild it, if I wanna try a fancy uh, graphics card that can be handled by the 700 watts PSU, I can do that. So I have more options rather than having less. So 
Um, if you are interested in any of these components, I mean, just look at the description. I don't have any links, uh, affiliate links or any type of stuff like that. I am not affiliated to anyone. I'm just uh, sharing these uh, videos with you as much as I can and with the um, budget and the and the access that I have, right? Because I don't have like the access that these major YouTubers have. They can get tons of motherboards and graphics cards and whatnot. But we hope we can get there. And I'm going to share a quick video of my task manager because I kept saying on the video that I was going to show you the task manager. Not that it matters too much, but here it is. This is a task manager. You can see CPU, the other components, and the GPU is now visible. Of course, uh, we did uh, stress test it and benchmark it, so it was obviously there. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, this one took me a little bit longer because um, my personal life gets in the way sometimes and other stuff. But uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, this uh, particular uh, build, if you want to do like a cheaper gaming rig, computer, whatever, uh, send me a comment and, and ask me if you have questions about a particular GPU or CPU combination, among other things. I'll be more than happy to assist you because I love this. I enjoy fixing things and I enjoy talking to you guys on my channel. Okay, you all take care and have a nice day. Loco Tech Man out.